Hey, what's up, family? Today we're going to do another Donald Goins, one of my favorite, the Kenyatta series. As I said, I think you got like 16 books. we done quite a bit already. We're almost going to finish them all. But my, out of all of them, my favorite is the four saga ones called the Kenyatta series. And for, for you that have uh, listened to our views on it, uh, watch our video on it, cool. And the ones that haven't, the way you catch up, the way it starts is Crime Partners is one. And then part two is Deathless, because mm -hmm. that was the one where, uh, that Crime Partner was the introduction to Kenyatta. How and, everything started. Yeah. And then Deathless was when he paid for this list to, to get rid of slash kill everyone that was bringing harm to the black community, such as drug pushers, pimps, uh, drug dealers, crooked cops. He was killing all these yeah. people. Yeah. Drug affiliations. All yeah. That. I love that. And then you got part three, which is this one, Kenyatta's Escape. And then you got four, that's, what is that one? Four is going to be Kenyatta's Last Hit. Yeah. But we'll do that one next. It's but, almost like what I just thought about. It's almost like a net, like this is like Netflix. You got yeah. four seasons. Yeah, 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 so, yeah exactly. That's yeah. cool. So this one's called Kenyatta's Escape. You see that? I hope I ain't covering Now this one, like I said, the four saga Kenyatta series is, the, is incredible. Yeah. From the beginning Incredible. to the end, it's really good. Now, where this one starts is exactly where uh, Deathless ends, two. where they commandeered the plane. Now, if you look at the word commandeer, just a big word for saying to take over, to take control of. Is that the word of the day? No, nah, that's not going to be the word of the day. But we're going to get the word of the day is going to be permeate. I'm going to explain why. And if you look up the word permeate, permeate means to spread all over, to spread about throughout. But um, here we go. So this picks up where they took over the airplane. They approached the airport. It was nonchalant. They got to their gate and all that. They was all cool about it. But they took over the plane, just like where it ended last Yeah. Time, right? They took over the plane. They pulled their guns all out, had everybody. But what they didn't know is on that plane was two undercover cops. Like on a lot of planes, mm -hmm. always be the case. A lot of us just don't know that. It's almost like the old movie with Wesley Snipes, uh, where he he was he was like, what's that movie? Y'all know what it's called? Mm -hmm. Wesley Snipes played the movie where he was the passenger fifty seven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That that that's what Wesley Snipes played. He was an officer in plain clothes, but he's there for the safety of the people. And that's how two uh, officers was on that plane. So when they took over the plane, the two officers, they was... Unbeknownst to them. To, thank you. Good uh -huh. job. <laughs> and, and when everything started to kick off, for example, let me just get right into it. So at one point, Kenyatta looked at his watch, and he, because he had told them to drive to Algeria. But he had noticed it was daylight and hours passed by. And he noticed, he said, well, I think this damn plane going in circles. This damn pilot's taking me for a damn fool. So he went up to the pilot. And when he got in there, he pulled his guns on the pilot and the co-pilot. And they was like, no, no, that's not the case. And he said, no, we're, we, you know, the daylight time, it just seems that way because this is different. He talked to him like he was stupid. So Kenyatta went back out. But he stayed by the door. As soon as he went out the door, he heard the co pilot. talking about Kenyatta. Yeah. And saying what they're going to really do. Yep. And Kenyatta bust back in. He said, see, one thing I can't stand is a damn peck of wood trying to play me for a damn fool. And he pulled his gun out. And before the co pilot could say something, bah! He shot him. <laughs> shot him. Killed him right on the spot. And now the, the pilot was like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? And then yeah, all. His whole gang came up to the front. All his gang came up to the front. And then, remember, it was two. Two cops. One Carson, he was a jerk off. He was one of them typical racist, Racism, wanna be yeah. a superhero. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, yo, a cop is a job. That's what a lot of these silly cops just don't get. A, being a cop is a job. If you want to say career, it's a career, it's a job. But go home to your family. Stop trying to trying be to a superhero yeah. all the damn time. And that's what this fool was doing. And when he communicated with the other cop, the other cop said, yo, man, it's too many of them. Don't try to be a superhero. And he was like, Oh, in his head, he was fantasizing. I'm going to be able to take all of them out. And I'm going to be uh, the big hero. And this and that. he said, man, don't do it. So when they all rushed to the top, next thing you know, uh, uh, more shooting started mm -hmm. because the car, Carson, when he was sitting next to the other cop now, he said, man, let's take him. And right away, he pulled the gun on one of the ladies and shot her dead. Mm -hmm. Right there. And then uh, her man shot him dead. And then they, they, it was just getting messy. It was getting, it was getting very messy. Very messy. And that's that's when the, the other cops said, man, I told you to keep your cool. Now you're going it, to, it's only one way this going to end. We're going to all get killed. Next thing you know, one of the bullets hit the pilot. Remember, the co-pilot was already dead. Exactly. And that's when it so hit cool. him, the plane just took a nosedive. And when it took a nosedive, all of a sudden, the, the pilot came back to him. Kenya was like, man, get this plane under control. And when he got it back under control, he did land it, but that was his last landing he ever landed. The pilot died. Now he was in the middle of Nevada desert, 
And they was like, what the hell are we going to do? Yeah. We don't know where we at, where we going to go. We supposed to go here, but we wound up being somewhere else. Yeah, but isn't it crazy because he also seen all his, some of his people some of his that people got died there. Because of that yeah. dumb cop, Carson. Especially one of his boys that they yeah. grew up together. That's yeah. really sad. Yeah, and then one but of his boys, Ray, got shot in the shoulder. He survived, but now he was in excruciating pain. He was too loud, like. Yeah. Like, I would have no, but I would have thought that they would have knocked him out or anything yeah. because he 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 was going to make them get into yeah. a lot of trouble. Like they did in the was it the first book That's, or whatever? They had to knock yeah. the drunk guy because yeah, he, he said this is the guy going to get us all caught. Yeah. They should have did that to Red because Red was in so much pain, he kept screaming. So anyway, while they in the desert, they looking around. All of a sudden, they hear these bikes coming up the road, as dark as it is. And Kenyatta goes, "Wait a minute, I hear about five bikes come up. Yo, let's everybody keep their cool and I, let me let me do all the talking." So when the bikes came up. All it white was, people. All white jokers. There was three guys and two women. And when they came up, all of a sudden, Kenyatta was like telling them. The guy said, what happened? Y'all plane went down. Kenyatta go, he go, yeah, man, the plane went down, man. But I'm the guard here. Just keep everybody under control. And the one white guy that obviously was the leader of all of them, mm -hmm. he got off the bike. He said, well, what's going on in that plane? He said, man, there's other passengers up there. I'm just here to try to keep everybody cool. So then he said, well, I'll go check for myself. I don't believe a damn thing you saying. And Kenyatta knew right then and there he who was he was trouble. dealing with. He says, see, this is that typical racist bastard that don't want to listen to a damn thing coming out of a black man's mouth. Mm -hmm. See, we can see he trouble, as you yeah, said. Trouble. So he went up on a plane, and the moment he went up on a plane, all you heard was, pa! Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and guess who that was? Betty. That's Betty. my girl. Betty. I really like Betty throughout the whole that, season. Yeah. yeah. I don't <laughs> see like it's a show. Betty was no joke, and she was not your average woman. She was a true fighter, beautiful, tall, talented, educated, and a fighter. Because what happened when that joker went up on the plane, as soon as he got up there, he seen all the dead bodies. And right away, he knew something was up. And then he said, what the hell? And then that's when Betty said, sit down since you came up. And then him seeing a woman, he, he made his biggest mistake. He charged at her after her and said, give me that damn gun. And Betty, right from the hip, was like, pow! And then walked over him and pow, pow! Killed See, him. that's what happened when you, mis when you misjudge. Yeah, killed his someone. Butt. Yep. So now back down on the street, mm. that's when... uh. They was like, what's going on? One of the other guys jumped on the bike and uh, one of the other females shot him. Boom. So now it was one guy and two women. So, <laughs> mm. so now uh, Kenyatta told the rest of them. He said, listen, if y'all be cool and go along with what we're saying, I can I, live. Y'all can live. I promise y'all I won't hurt none of y'all. And see, what was happening at that very moment, you had Carol, that guy that went up on that plane, that was her husband. Yeah. But they had a bad relationship. And she couldn't She didn't stand. really want to be with him anyway. Yeah, so he, by Betty killing her, her husband, it was like less stress relief. Mm -hmm. She'd been wanting to be away from him anyway. So it was like kind of kind of did a good thing by killing yeah. her husband. So he asked them, yo, where they from? How far is uh, the nearest town from here? And the lady Carol was mm -hmm. the one that spoke up. Carol was this attractive, tall, white woman, whatever. And uh, now remember, Kenyatta can't stand white people. Especially crooked ass cops. Yeah, but let me but, but let me stop you right there. I don't think Kenyatta was a, a racist um, person just because he didn't like white people. Mm -hmm. He just didn't like bad the people situation. that was bad in you know, the bad situation. White corrupt. I like that because yeah. you're right. I, I nah, agree with it's, you. He's not a. He wasn't yes. necessarily a racist. He just was one of them guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. He was one of them type of guys that he's sick and tired. Of being tired. tired so exactly. therefore, he's like, I'm going to do something about it. our situations always being dealt a bad card. So you're right. Exactly. That's what so it that's, was. Mm -hmm. But in this case, let's, I, I just want to make a point with this to give you the word of the day. Kenyatta really didn't like white people, mm -hmm. as it put in the book. But like mommy said, he just wanted to make the word. do something about yeah. the injustice that's always being dealt on us. So, But the white lady, Carol, who her husband got killed, she didn't like black folks. <laughs> she really good, did, and she good. spoke about it. When people came to their ranch, black folks they only came to do to be servants, and she never looked at them with attraction. But for some reason, she was attracted she, to Kenyatta, yeah, and she didn't know this man. Never seen him day in her but life. I think she was more attracted not by his appearance, but by his standards and how everybody respected him, and how he was a leader, and how he stood forth forward to his yeah. word and went through with his. Word. I agree. Good That's point. an attraction. In you now, said a mouthful. That, that's your word of the day. Because the reason her attraction was to Kenyatta because she seen the power, the respect, and how he had everybody in order when he spoke and when he appeared. She realized how power permeated 
off of him. Now, if you look up the word permeate, as you know, That's I the word, word of the day. Of the day. Permeate means to spread about, to spread all throughout. She noticed when that man stepped on the scene, Everybody how they got in order. They listened. He, she felt his power. And as, although she never found a black man attractive, she had a huge attraction to him. And it wasn't about the looks. Because uh -oh. even though he was a handsome man, she was like, this guy, he, 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 he demands respect. And uh -huh. they respect him, and she respected a man, a real man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And she's seen it in him. And now, the flip side of that, Kenyatta didn't particularly like white women, but people, period. But when dealing with Carol, that one lady, when they spoke in private, he everything he asked her, she said, I'll be honest with you and tell you everything. And she was. And everything that she said happened exactly like she said. She said it was a bumpy road. We might get top over the bikes or whatever, this and that. That happened. She said... It's about 100 miles to the farm. It's about 300 to Las Vegas. That was true. She said it was... Uh, two I more. see his attraction. She named so. the exact people that was at the farmhouse. It ain't... Some people say she was a rat, but like she told Kenyatta, because Kenyatta said, you act like if that was your husband that went up on that plane, you seem like you're not even bothered. Mm -hmm. But like she told him, nah, let me tell you something. That man was a thorn in my ass. And by you killing him, that means now I own everything back at that farmhouse. Ooh. So you actually did me a favor. That was sweet. So now, Kenyatta, <laughs> although he yeah. didn't like white people, he had a strong respect for her because it permeated off of her loyalty. Right. Where he said, man, this woman is solid. Mm -hmm. Don't She's nobody happy. hurt this woman. He told yeah. all of them. It's like his gem, the king. Yeah. And together they had a little Ronnie Rue, whatever this and that. But then when Betty came down off the plane, as yeah. soon as she seen all the women, slits came in her eyes like, and then she pulled her gun. He said, look, look, you better control yourself. See, you you constantly get it. She's like, nah, but you know, they probably try to set us up. She, and he said, listen, this woman's been nothing but solid with us. She's telling us everything we need to know. So stop always so trigger having to kill somebody. Now, the crazy thing, how about this? Unbeknownst to Kenyatta at the same, just before all that happened, at back in Michigan at the farmhouse, oh, yeah, yeah. that was foul. Wait. Yeah, it was. Ali, Ali now was at the farmhouse. Uh -huh. Remember, now he's in control, and all he think about now, put his chest out, now I'm going to be the big chief. That but what he didn't know, big massacre. at the same time, the police was about to raid the place. Mm -hmm. As soon as they got to the farmhouse, immediately, uh, Ali was looking around like, what the heck is going on? They ain't know nothing. It's kind of foul. Kenyatta didn't tell him that that might happen. Yeah, it was kind of messed up. But, then, but that's not, crazy for a leader not to prepare mm -hmm. them for see, anything you know what that I was found going out on. He just thought they was going to get locked up, and he was going to bail them out later. He didn't know it was going to be a massacre. And sure, it was a massacre. Why? Because as always, trigger happy, racist, prejudiced cops. Because as soon as the cops got on the scene, nobody had no guns out. Nobody was acting a fool or not. They was woman and man, hand in hand, woman and man walking about. Next thing you know, one of the cops jumped out and go, freeze, and just shot. Yeah. He just shot a joker right in the back instantly. And when that happened, they That's all took, everything came. They all took up arms. And, and it's like, boop, boop, boop. Cop got shot and killed. Two of them it got shot so killed. It was so crazy. Like, the whole killed. scene, like, it was just like, when it was detailed in the book, it was just like, yeah. it felt like you were right there watching. Oh, man, it was yeah. deep. Even <laughs> Ali, when he, he was just going to get guns, but then when he looked on the floor, he seen his lady. His lady was there uh, bleeding, and he went and grabbed her, and she was her last breath was like, "I'm sorry." But you gotta remember, remember, they were just arguing before. Yeah, you're right. They uh, was arguing, so he he was crying. He picked up a gun. He went to the window. He's like, "You sons of bitches!" Uh, and then, next thing you know, cop tried to run for cover behind the car, and Ali caught him. Bah, 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 bah. Blew his head off. It's like you sons of bitches. Then he took for cover, and then. Uh, they were shooting at him, and he jumped back up, and they riddled him. Boop, boop, but he still was alive, and he got another clip. It was like, you son of a bitch! Yeah. Boop, 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 Just trying to blow them jokes. <laughs> it really made you feel like it was a movie. But then they, they the cats that was inside uh, jugging them, they, they said, yo, Kenyatta, we got to get out of here, man. Yo, let's no, go through the back. I mean, I'm sorry. Ali, we got to get out of here. Let's get... The back barn, though, we got yeah, to get to the escape. they don't know about the backyard, so it was like, we just go in the back. And Ali was just, he was just so, y'all killed my woman. He was lost. Yeah. You know exactly. what I'm saying? He just stayed, and he just shot it up with the cotton. and eventually they shot and killed. But now they got to the farmhouse, got on the horses, and was out. But as they was out, one of the snipers caught the one lady in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, they get they get to the, uh, the other farmhouse, they get in the wagon, and they gone. I know where the tanks come in. Yeah, and at the same time, tanks came in. And as tanks came in, they seen it that they was riding off. 
and the tank started blowing up the house, and they had flamethrowers burning the house. It was Some very of the unnecessary to cop what the cops were doing. Like, it was never that They overdid the it. I mean, you got They're emotional. Always... How about the, the couple of people? They surrendered. They came yeah. out of the house. We give up. We give up. Couples was hand, like, so, oh, my God. It was what so happened, sad. though? Like, when they came out? They shot him up. So, like, really with no heart. Just shot him. I was just like, wow. this is That pissed sad. me off. But you, you know, know, that, that was perfectly done. That, that, that happened in a book, but that happened in real life, too. And Benson, the black cop, he was even emotional. He was like, yo, what the hell yeah. is going on? He said, the people gave up, and you guys just shot. And all the other racist cops like, them damn niggers got what they deserve. And then even his white yeah. partner was like, yo, that was see, over the top. And Benson said, you think they ever did that, those white criminals? Mm -hmm. You know how many times white criminals do the same thing? And y'all arrest them. Them people gave up. Man, y'all shot them down like dogs. That was purposely done, though. He was like, it man, was sometimes this made me hate the fact that I'm a cop. Because I see how much injustice y'all do. But anyway, so now they out. Now, Kenyatta and them, they get to, oh, mm -hmm. they get to the farmhouse. Why did he get to the farmhouse? Remember, he left Betty and them back at the plane because they're going to get the doom bugs to come back and pick up Red because he can't ride on the bike. So why did at the farmhouse, him and the white lady go up, do a little round yeah. And then later when he come back to the farmhouse, for the first time, he walks in there and he looks in the farmhouse and his eyes, remember, word of the day. Per permeate. 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 His eyes permeated over the whole place and he realized, oh, these peck of woods got money. Yeah, they had like leather rugs. Yeah. Leather furniture. It, it was yeah. well furnished. Silk all over the place. Fake, uh, nice paintings. All nice kind of stuff. And then uh, one of the dudes came from the back and said, Yo, Kenyatta, you should see it. They got a they got an in-house, in-ground pool. Man, they got drinks. They got food. They got everything. He said, man, I was hoping we'd get a, get a swim in the pool while we're here. And Kenyatta being all tired, he's like, man, I wish I'd get some rest. He said, yo, y'all don't get too comfortable because we got to be the hell up out of here. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to go get red and I'll be back. So when he came back, got Betty and them, came back. Now, when he came back, they was all in the swimming pool. Just having fun. Like, like they're not on, like, they're not, they don't have a bounty on yeah. them. And Kenyatta, seeing old boy get out with his uh, cut off jeans, he said, y'all here hey, having a good damn time. We on a damn run. No, Man. he went off on Betty first. Man. No, no. He went off on old boy for, I forgot, was it Jug? He said, because old boy said, yeah, Kenyatta, man, we ain't having a good time, yeah, but, I think it was man, junk. you should get something, too. And then that's when Kenyatta said, he said, man, you better go back there. He told Betty. He said, you better go back there and dump their heads in that damn water and get them straight. You see? Because if this alcohol mess your thinking up, mm -hmm. I swear, I'm going to kill y'all my damn self. This is the problem with you jokers. Y'all always off track and distracted. And then that's yeah. what Betty said. Yeah, but Kenyatta, I was hoping we could stay here for a couple of days. It's so nice. Like they're not on the, like they're on the run. Like you, you guys are kind of trying to get tracked it right now. Yeah. And you're talking but it's about almost, it's almost, it's, it's, it's an example. It's almost like a baby when you put a little shiny yeah. thing on in front of it and they just like, right. ah, like a shiny light that's how they were. Baby. They were that's distracted. The and that's what Kenyatta went off yeah. on baby. He you says, gotta remember the whole time Kenyatta was talking very stern, um, old white girl was looking like, oh my. Cause she was tired. So <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Cause she was tied up. But let me get to that point. So, so Kenyatta yelled at um, Betty. He said, he said, so let me get this right. We are on the run from the law from all over the daggone nation. And you want to lay up here until the cops come? You know what? This, this, this is why women like you need to be laid. Because y'all say the most bullheaded, stupidest stuff. Matter of fact, get the hell away from me. <laughs> I like that, yo. But yeah, the part you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Old girl, when Kenyatta finally fell asleep, because you can be the biggest, baddest person in the world. Your Still body needs sleep. Thank you. Your body needs sleep. And he kind of fell asleep for an hour. And, and when he woke up, he see that the white girl was tied up. When he didn't tie her up. And when he woke up and seeing her tied up and her hand turned all pink red, he knew right in his head, right then and there. He said, ain't nobody but tie her Betty. up. But exactly. Betty. He said, I knew that was Betty that did that. Yeah. But anyway, so now they leave. They finally get the doom buggy. They get the car. And now they off to California. And while they off to California, uh, Benson and the other cops, they meet up with some other cops. One of the cops called him boy. And this young cop, Evans, he really liked Ryan and um, Benson. Because he realized they are true good cops. Exactly. And so he takes a liking to them. But then I like what they, they were the they were the known they were the common cops throughout the whole world. Yeah. But I like what Evan said to all to Ryan and Benson. He said, I don't get it, man. I looked at her dossier when they when they went to the plane and seen some of the dead people. Mm -hmm. Now dossier is what cops use saying a, a report. 
uh, it, it gives a person full background, schooling, criminal record, all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. He said, I looked at her dossier and he said, he said, I don't get it. What the hell is up with this Kenyatta guy? What do he have that permeates so much amongst people that they willing to die for him? I don't get it. He said, that woman, that dead woman that was back at that plane, she was beautiful. She was a gorgeous, beautiful woman, and she had a gorgeous body. And he said, I check her dossier. That girl went to college. She come from a good family. So I still just don't get it. What is it about this guy, Kenyatta, that permeates people to him and that makes them want to die for him? Mm. I thought that was special, too, because you really, some people have that power. Like I said, how Carol was attracted to Kenyatta, Kenyatta was attracted, it was the permeated power. Exactly. And on Kenyatta's side, it was the loyalty that Carol mm -hmm. showed. But now, um, what else? You remember anything else? Um, it's a lot. Like, it, <laughs> How about when he got to California to shoot out the gas station? Oh, my God. It, yo, what, what's the boy's name that would make so much noise? Red. He was just killing Cause, me. Cause like, like, yeah. Like, okay, we get it. You're hurt. But <laughs> we're trying to make no noise, if not nothing. Like, less noise than anything. But yeah. I thought, I thought and, it was... And Kenyatta really didn't want to stop for gas. Like, he... Because he, it's like... If we stop, we have a chance and we might get pulled over or might some be some suspicious. Mm. Especially that Red when making it, all this damn yeah, noise. Especially oh, trying, to, right. trying to get involved with no white people from mm. here on out because we don't know we don't trust no white people. Yeah. So he was but then the gas kept getting low. He's like, bro, we, we F it. Stop. Like we just have to and what what's up, boy? Still making mad noise. When they pulled in the gas station, it was getting gas. Next thing you know, what a happened? Hot pulls, oh my god. <laughs> No, yeah, but I don't understand why Kenyatta should have just knocked him out. Because they were boys. Right. They right. were like, he just It don't him. matter right. at this point, it don't matter if it's they have such a tight right. bond. They would have knocked him out because this is gonna cost them. Yeah, it's gonna cost them. Caught. When they pulled over, the guy was pumping the gas. Yeah. And next you know, a cop pulled up and he was like, Oh damn. Yo. And then the cop got out and the cop didn't think nothing. He was just he was walking to the uh, soda machine. And just as he's walking to the soda machine, all of a sudden he heard, Oh, I told her! And the cop turned around with the gun. And then right away, uh, That's when it just came crazy, it, Yeah, next you know, when the Kenyatta boy pulled the gun out and bah, shot the cop. The cop shot him back in return. But, but then the cop was still in the car. The cop yeah. had a partner. And then the partner jumped out and shot old boy too. And then that's when Arlene, uh, old boy, uh, Jug's wife, she pulled her double barrel out. Boom! Blew the cop away. And then Kenyatta realized there was a third cop in the other car, in the car too. Then he came out with his gun and boom, 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 boom booed him out. So, yeah, that so was back to Vincent, the cops, and they was like, what the hell is with this Kenyatta guy? It seemed like he just won't die. And even when they got on the scene, because now, uh, now one of the bullets hit the gas pumps, yeah. and they was like, we got to get the hell up out of here. And they said, we can't go that way. It's a f flame of fire. And this way, Kenyatta's like, we're going to run through these doors here. Of the station, and he ran to there, and he got out, and he just turned the corner as Benson was coming down, and that's what Evan said. I think I seen a, a Cadillac, and they said, "Man, what you think? We gonna pull pull over every Cadillac we see? Exactly. Come on, man, we gotta get to the That's thing. the one that shot me. That's and that like, was it. That's <laughs> <laughs> and when they seen all the dead bodies, just like at the plane, one of the other racist cops said, "I think that Kenyatta's dead." But even Benson always said, "Nah." Although it's another black man there, dead and tall and bald headed, fit the description. Kenyatta ain't gonna die that easy. Yeah, exactly. For some reason, somehow, he always slips through. I don't get it. Mm. But he, I, I doubt he's dead. Yo, this is a great book. It's yeah. like one <laughs> action going after going on. the other. Yeah, we thank you. We could keep going on and on. But hey, this is part three. We got part like, four coming. Subscribe and comment. Yes. We're gonna do the fourth one too, you guys. So stay tuned. Yes. On that note. Hey, subscribe, share, like, and comment. I already Peace. said that. <laughs>